So, that's a great slide. So, if you see our uh, website, right, you will see our website, everything is on the website itself. Okay, now to log on to H5P, you will have to access www.h5p.org. From the feedback, feedback, yeah, to, to H5P. H5P. Okay, that's the website you log on. Okay, now. I would recommend that all of you create a free account first. Just create a free account. So just switch off that one. It's creating feedback. That just switch it off. It will pick up. H5P. You can record. Uh, you just continue with H5P. Log on. Use your UMS email account if if you can because login. yeah login yeah login. No H five P. No, just go to H five P dot org. It's H five P dot org, not com. Huh? Com is a commercial version. It's H five P dot org. It's a open source software. Just check everyone go to org, not com. Because you are logged on on a different user ID, probably on the system, on the terminal. <laughs> H5P, I think that's a com.com. .com. So you log on using your UMS because it's uh, it's good to use an educational account, edu. Dot my. <laughs> Yeah, you create a. You have to create an account because you have an account already. No. No. You need to have a new account, so you sign up for a new account. You cannot log on because you don't have a account earlier, previous account. Okay. So you have to create account. Create account. So everyone is on the same page, it's factory, logged in, created account. Well, have all got an account? Got. Um, it's got. Uh, oh, it's loading, that's why, because of the speed. That's yes. org, right? H5P.org, right? Org. Okay. <coughs> you cannot log into your account because yeah. your network, your network, your network, your network. This thing is really bad. Eh? No, don't close it, doctor. You, have, you cannot stand in front of the speaker. Okay, okay. Yeah, I know. It's been back from the speaker. It's really. That's not H5P. That's H5P.com. This is H5P.org. H5P.org. Dot .org. .org. That's a com. Dina, you have learned how to use last time, right? Okay. So, already? Everyone's logged in? Okay. I will go through the next step. So, I will go through step by step. Okay, now H5P is a dynamic website. Dynamic means if you check it every month or every week, you'll have new tools inside. It's developed by open source developers. So, you have API tools inside. So, you can develop your content and then it's freely available. Now, when we create uh, content in H5P, we can share it in our Smart2UMS by using a process known as embedding. You all know what's embedding? 
Some of you all know what's embedding. I will show you how to embed. Okay. But before we begin, I will show you an example of what H5P can do for you. So let's see, you, let's look at something. I, I took a generic topic. I don't want to cover biology or psychology. I just took generic topic, which is of broad interest. Okay, let's look at something known as, okay, let's look at this. Takes time, okay. Now I, am, I have created an image here, okay. Now, if you're, if you're a biologist, you may use an image of a human body or the skeletal column, uh, spinal column, whichever image you like. Okay. Now, when you want to describe an image to your student, you may have to click. You have to put labels, right? So, H5P allows you to use something known as hotspot. Okay. Now, suppose this is an aviation image. I am just using an example. And you want to know what's this hotspot. You click here. Okay. It will tell you what's on that hotspot. So this one allows you to develop hotspots in many ways. So you can put in hotspots as text, video, or image. Okay. Let's look at another hotspot here. So you have this one says flaps. Okay. Now suppose you want to teach your student about, give you, uh, your student a sense of example. You click here. Okay. So it loads. It shows you the tail. Okay. So you can insert an image. So this way you can convert any image into a dynamic field. Okay. There is, there is also an optional uh, thing you can add, voice. Suppose you want to speak to your student. This is a tail. It works this way. This is the elevator flap. You can actually add that in the text. Okay. And there's one more feature which you can add, which is called. So you just close this. And then you have another feature, which is this one. Okay. So, so it will allow you to use video. Okay. Wait for a while. It's loading because our network. Okay, so this will actually show you can insert the video and it will show you how the flaps actually work. Okay, so you can see that working. Okay, sorry. Oops, sound is too loud. So if you are teaching a subject, you can actually give dynamic content. Okay, so do you all, all want to learn how to do this first? Do you want me to go step by? Okay, okay, well, let's look at hotspots first. So to, to prepare you all, right, I would suggest that each one of you all download one image for your particular subject. You download one image from the internet using the Pixabay. You download an image into your, depending on your respective subject. It may be a molecule, it may be a picture of a fruit, it may be anything. Okay, so you can use Pixabay or any other of those images. So I'll give you all about five minutes to download one image. Okay, I'm going to download one image as well. <coughs> Okay, so you just download and wait, then I will guide you through the steps. Okay. So I will go cancel all this and I go to fix fix. Pixabay. Pixabay is actually giving you public domain image which can be reused. You can look for other sources as well, but those are quite, uh, you have to check whether you can reuse those images. Okay, so we have image. Okay, I download this nice image. Download. So free download. Okay. download. Robot. Pixabay. Still on, okay. no one inside. Okay. Yeah. You can tell. Na yeah. two nine two seven zero yeah. S A B. Somebody's car is. Hello. Um. Mohan Pratyana. Ada kereta S A B sembilan dua tujuh kosong X. Kita. Saga. Kereta tu masih on, masih hidup, tapi tidak orang di dalam. Yeah. S A B sembilan dua tujuh kosong X. Proton Saga. Auto start. S A B nine two zero. 
Nine two seven zero X. Ah, betul. Okay. Okay, got it. Thank you. It remains on. That's what every time the proton like that it starts by itself. Yeah, like Zora also, my friend. Can you carry on? Okay. 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 So everyone has downloaded an image, just a single image. Okay, single image. Okay. So now go back to your. Go around. Save image. Everyone has an image. Yeah, everyone has an image on your screen. Okay, just download. It can be any image, even a fruit basket with different fruit or something else. Anything which you feel. Like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can just download. Is it related to your subject? Your subject? Your bidang? No. So you just download some image with maybe fruit basket or I just want to show you. Even this can be used. Just download. Just download. Yep. Yep. Just you can free download. Oh, any you can use that way also. See. Then download. Okay, so you have that. So is everybody on the same page? All images downloaded. Okay. So now you go through your H5P uh, this dashboard here, and you go to my account. Click on my account. My account. My account. Okay. And you will see your name and everything else. And you have to click here. Create new content. Create new content. Wait for a while because all of us are accessing H5P uh, simultaneously. It may take time. Okay, so create new content. Okay. Now, don't uh, don't click on any button. Okay. Don't click. I will tell you why. I will show you how to select the correct uh, tool. Now. For those of you all who are interested in H5P, I will be conducting one full day tutorial only on H5P. So please give your name to us later and I will arrange a date and time for you. Because there are many tools in H5P which I cannot cover in two hours. Okay, but they are very, very useful. Okay, simple one. But I want you all to uh, interact. So even if it takes one or two days, it's okay. You all have to attend the whole day. Okay, I will teach you all how to. So give your names later to Zulfadli. We will arrange a training for you. Okay. This is just a preliminary. Now, uh, how many of you all use WordPress? WordPress. WordPress account. Do you all have WordPress website? WordPress? No. You don't have WordPress. Okay. So, okay, WordPress is good for educators because we can share our things with on uh, social media. Okay. You all have, uh, everyone has Facebook, right? Instagram? Okay. So, any, no. Okay. Whoever, all this content which you create on H5P, can be shared on any platform. You can share it on Facebook, Instagram, on uh, WordPress, anything. So you can share it because it can be embedded into your content. Okay. So, so now if you look through this, you will see something known as hotspot. Okay, I'll show you. Okay, can you see the first one? Image hotspot. Okay. In the hotspot, you will see two types of hotspot. One hotspot where you create. And what's hotspot where you ask the students to f find the hotspot. Okay? So you use the one for image hotspot. That's where we create the hotspot. Okay? So you click on image hotspot. Click here on this. Okay? Wait for a while. Click, click. So wait for a while for the image hotspot to be loading. Okay? So this is image hotspot. Okay, now let's go through step by step. So now we have created something known as image hotspot. Yes. So our title will be, for example, these are, so it can be anything, these are the components, components of, uh, for example, fight a plane. You make your own, okay? You make your own uh, description. Now, related to my image. Related to image, Not fo don't follow me. I'm just doing it out of. I'm using generic topic. Okay. Now, once you have added this, you click here, add. Okay, add. Now you have downloaded the image, right? So I download this image. I download. I add. Open. Okay. Now, remember something about using image in H5P. 
because H5P is open source, it's open, it's open to the world, everyone can see it. Make sure that the image which you use is also from open source content. It should be Creative Commons attribution image. Don't use any image from private. Uh, or if it's your own image, okay. If it's an uh, image you uh, filmed in the lab or you photograph, it's okay. But don't use images which are copyrighted. If it's use a copyrighted image, someone will find it. Okay, H5P is open. So once you create content here, everyone can see it. Remember, it's open for everyone. It goes in public domain. Okay. So let's look at a very important thing, which is the image curation. Okay, Copy, uh, basically like this. So you need to edit the copyright. Okay, click on edit copyright. Now this is image from this website, right? Okay. So who has created it? It's somebody called, for example, okay, so you can see this image. Yeah, you have to see the image first and who has created it, okay? So this image is created by whom? So it's somebody called Pexel, Pexels, okay? So this one, ha this person has created this image. So you give him attribution, copy his name, his or her name, place here, paste. Yeah, paste. Okay, this one you can add anything, a airplane. And then you, this one you don't have to add here. And then you can add his image link. Okay, you add this image link here. Copy. And here. Okay, so that's how you attribute the author. Is it clear how you do this? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, okay. So let us let me go step by step. So now this you have you have an image here, right? Yeah. Now when we do the, when we use other people's images, it's very important to curate the content. We can't just use images. For example, if you post it on Pixabay, somebody will use your image, but you won't have any uh, like a trace of that image. So when you attribute it, you get uh, basically uh, attribution to your name. So we need to create it. So what we do, we do something known as edit copyright. Okay, so this is the image of an airplane. I've keyed this in here. The author is Pexels, which I download from here, which is basically this is the author, Pexel. Pexels author is the author. Is no, 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 no. That is a that's a that's a standalone. It's just coming in. The author is actually from here, Pexel. This Pexel is the author. You copy this and you paste it. Oh no, no, that that is a default. It's just a default. Chanta example. It's just an example. It's not the real one. It's a default. Yeah, you don't have to use the uh, default. So this is the source of the image and the license is actually something known as public domain. Okay. Now all images which if you all have a Pixabay account and you all are using it to upload all your pictures, they are all in the public domain. Okay. And they are called public domain mark. Okay. So if you downloaded your own image, and it has a copyright, please use that version as well. This yeah? One is, uh, public. How do we know this one? The website is public or? No, this is not. Don't use this one. It may not be public oh. domain. Oh. Zul, can you help them to check whether they are doing the attribution correctly? Yeah. Just check. So once you have attributed the image, we can go further on. Pixabay is the best because it's free. Oh, Pixel, yeah, it's all all free. PD. No, no, no. The years you just leave blank. The, what you are seeing is just an example. It's a default. Yeah, just the thought. If you have the year, it's okay. But if you don't have, it's okay as well. Okay, so you click. Yeah. Pixabay. Yeah. Pixabay. Pixa. P i x a b a y. Zul, can you help? P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. Yeah, you will, I will just go step by step. step. Yeah, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. So does everyone have their image in place? Okay, everyone done. Just edit, upload. Just close, just close it. It'll, by default, it will accept. Yeah, just close. Okay, so this is the image now. Hmm. 
I'll just wait for a while until everyone does their images. Sudha, Sudha, Samba. Sudha. Will I have doctor yours? Okay. Okay. Yes, I'm waiting for everyone to finish. So I'll just wait. For okay. Now the next part is very easy. Anyone can do it. It's just moving the cursor on your image. So, okay. So, suppose I move this cursor. So, you can see the hotspot position. You just move it. Okay. So, I move this hotspot here. Just click and move. Okay. So, I put the hotspot here and say this is a propeller. Okay. I just write propeller. Propeller, sorry. This is a propeller. Okay, so you add the text, and you add the text, and you add the text. You have to key in your text. This is a propeller. Okay, so you just propeller. Just the size, make it bigger. Okay, so you can add the word. So you add a heat map for that. So you click and then it becomes clickable. You you add your you add your own stuff. Huh? Don't add this. I'm just doing an example. <laughs> okay, so this is a okay, for example this. Okay, so I add item. So I add hotspot and I add, add hotspot. Okay, so I have created one hotspot on the image. So can you see I have used the propeller here? There's a propeller image and then I put a hotspot and I say this is a propeller. Okay? Yeah. Then I save. Now I want to create another hotspot. Okay, so I add another hotspot, add hotspot, and then I shift the hotspot location to to anything. For example, I move it here. Okay. So then I put my pop-up content which is text. And I put this is the M pen example. Okay. So I created another hotspot here for M pen One more, two. Okay. Now I want to add another hotspot, so I add another hotspot. Like this, you can populate the entire image. Okay. So I add the hotspot text, and then I add example. Okay, this is the undercarriage for example. So we created the hotspots. Are you all, all okay with that? You have all created your hotspot, right? So I'm just showing you text first, and I will go into video and images. Which one? Yeah. Yep. So you add, okay? Yeah. 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 It takes time because H5P is uh, open source, so they are using servers which are slower than normal commercial servers. You can only add one image for one hotspot. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So but why isn't it on the on one image? One yeah, hotspot. you can add only one image and then you can create multiple hotspots on one image. So you cannot not add more than one image. Okay? So this is the text. Okay. So let's look at how if you all have developed your hot your image, right? Let's see how it looks like. So don't forget to click on this button here which is save. Save. Okay, save. Save the image, otherwise you will end up losing everything. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Okay, so this will come. Okay, send. Okay, okay. This will come sometimes. Okay, so now this is what your student will see. Okay, they will see this image of the plane with the hotspot. Now your student of aviation, whichever field, they want to know what are the parts, so they click here, and they will say, okay, this is a so propeller. Okay. 
You click here. This is the rampanage. And this is the landing gear. Okay? Is, is it clear how you do it? So if any of you need help, you can ask me. I will come around. I'm lost. Yep. You don't have image? No, I have. Uh, you have image? So background image, uh, okay. Don't don't add anything. You just add hotspot position. You click where you want to click. Uh, click, click. Uh, okay. You add. Uh, okay. Dendrobium. Okay. Go up. Pop up content. Uh, okay. You just put the hotspot. Okay. Okay. Suda. Suda. This one. Okay. Okay. So this one you add again. Move around. And you move around. Suda. Okay. The place which you want. Okay. Uh, so okay. Add hotspot. Done. Suda. Right. You just save. 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 Okay, good. You all have all images. Going? Okay, see you. Lecture, right? Okay, okay, go, go, go. That's important. Okay, now your image is ready there. You you click and then you see. Mm -hmm. Public domain. Public domain. So, all everything okay? Okay, I will show you how to use it in smart in a while. Okay. <laughs> First, we do the image itself. Okay, now you need to add the. You want to uh, make your image more dynamic, right? You want to add video inside. Okay, this is how you add video. So, when you want to edit, right, you go to the edit mode. Can you see the edit button here? No need for me. It's okay. Just to Thank you. Edit mode here. Edit. This one. This from this. The edit button, right? Okay. Let me look for a video on YouTube. Okay. So I look for YouTube video. Okay. I look for YouTube. Okay. I look for ATR. Okay. Okay, I want to insert this video. For example, this is the same plane, but now it is dynamic. Okay. I want to insert this dynamic okay. image inside the frame of the of my uh, H5P. Okay. I want to insert this video of this image. It's clear? Okay, so how we do it is like this. If you look at YouTube, it allows you to share image. Okay. So you share. That's the embed code. This is the code which you can insert. So you, all you do is copy this code. Copy it. Everyone is okay? On track? On track. where did you click So okay, you click here, share. Share. And then you'll see the code here. The code. Which one? Edit, edit is at the top of the page, of your page. Copy. Okay. So you want the, your student to watch this video with your presentation, right? So you go back to your image here. Okay, so I want to add the uh, pop-up. Okay. So I add hotspot. We go down, add hotspot. Can you see this at the bottom of your image? Add hotspot. Click the share and then one. Yeah, yeah. I'm going through with other people okay. are following us. Uh. Share. So share. Yes. Copy. 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 Okay. So if you are using social media, you will probably know how to do it. So, okay. so I added a hotspot. Okay, so in this case, that hotspot is a video hotspot. Video. Video hotspot. Can you see this hotspot? Tag. We have text which you did. Video and image. Okay. So you can add a video hotspot here by clicking here. Video. When you click video, okay, you will see here the add file, and you add your YouTube video here. Add YouTube video. Got it? 
Click your YouTube video. Your YouTube video should be in. What? Yeah. 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 Copy the URL. Yeah. Just copy the URL into the video source. Uh, you click untitled video, video source, scroll, scroll down, scroll, scroll, scroll down. Scroll down, mm -hmm. uh, video source. Yeah, but you are not, ah, yeah, click this. Yeah, just add your YouTube. YouTube uh, URL, which you copied from YouTube. Okay, so paste, paste, paste. Okay. Uh, okay, insert, insert. Yeah, okay, it's okay. Okay, URL. Add your URL. Done. Okay. So you want to add, you insert. Insert. Now you save. Okay, so when you click on the hotspot, one of them will actually open the video and you can play the video inside the picture. So this is very useful. Suppose you are doing some kind of, for example, cookery. You want to show cutting and then you want to zoom, you can zoom on that. So if you are doing the medical uh, surgery and you want to show, show some procedure, you can add that as well inside. Okay, so that's the way it works. Okay, so we are clear on that? Yes. Okay, now let's learn how to add image. So, same as text, you can add image as well, image file to that. Okay, to download image, right? Again, you go to the Pixabay, Pixabay, and I'm going to download uh, image. So, I'll download image of propeller. Okay, I may download any image of propeller, for example, this one. Okay, this is actually free. You get paid in for it. Download image of propeller. Just look for one image, image, image. So you look for the from aircraft. This one? To find a specific one is quite hard. Propeller. Okay, so I cannot find one. Just download an image of a propeller. Download this. And you get a free download. And download. Okay, you download any image. <laughs> download. Now, so now you want to add the image, right? You go back to edit. Edit here on the top. And then you add another hotspot. For example, I click here hotspot, add hotspot. So the hotspot position in this case should be also on the propeller. So I click here. I click on the hotspot here. And then I add the pop-up content, which is a image. Okay. So yeah, you know how to add uh, text and video. Now we add image. So once you have the image, you click on add. And then you have your image of the propeller here and open. What I download it. So you see. So whatever you do, always save. Okay, now you can you can see your image by now. You all have your image already. All of you have your images on your frame. So so you yeah, I'm showing you a quick example. Usually you have to spend a lot of time creating hotspot, but once you create it, you can reuse it for the student forever. I mean you can use it over many years. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, you can because you are using a image in image. In, in, uh, you are embedding an image into image. So, so usually at that no time don't doesn't oh, come. So, but please use the copyright version because we are embedding. 
uh, you don't have to, you just add, uh, you add the image, it's done. So you can write something about the image here as hover text. Hover text means something which will move on top of the text. Like, for example, you are describing the image, you can edit there. That's fine, I'm talking about the copyright. No, no need, no need. For this one, there's no need. There's no because need. H5P because H5P assumes already. there is a copyright on the main one. But on H5P one. assumes that everything inside is basically shareable, CCBY. Creative Common Attribution. Okay, so if yeah. it's an so image embedded in another image, there's no copyright. It won't appear on that. It won't appear. So please use the copyright because somebody may, uh, of course it's highly unlikely, but somebody may find it. Yes. Yep. Sorry, hotspot? Yeah. What are you using? Some different thing? <laughs> no, no, this is something else. I, I'm focusing on that. Just focus on that. Okay, so at this stage, you'll have your image ready. So this image contains text. So you'll have text one. You'll have text two. Okay, you'll have video. You have, uh, again, text. And you have two for one, which is the text, text, one second. Ah, sorry, just show it. Huh? So you have a propeller and then you have text. Okay, so one second. It takes some time to load. It'll load. Okay, so. When you, when you create this kind of images on H5P, it may take some time to load because the system will be slower because all of us are using simultaneously. Okay, it'll be a bit slower. Can you all see your image? Yes. Can you see image with the hotspot? Yes. Okay. okay so one minute. One second, I have to adjust this one. Oh, so maybe this one is too close. Just shift it here. See. Now this is actually, it opens up. Okay, so you click and it should open up fully. So just wait, for, uh, just with this H5P, right? Because it's free, it takes some time to load. All of us are logged into the same terminal at the same time, so it should be taking some time. But you should be able to see your image when you view it later on. You log in and you view it at home, okay, in your class. So it is already in my account? Yep, it's already in your account. It won't go away. And remember, it's public. So anyone who upload there, it will appear in the public domain. So this uh, H5P, what you created, for example, we created this. You, it's in the system. So any, for example, if somebody is looking for Airbus A400M, right, they search, this will appear as one of the search engine in Google. So whatever we create in H5P is open for the world. It's open source. So please don't put any private content here. I mean, something which you don't want to share, like patented data or something, don't put in this H5P. Okay, it's open source. Okay, now you'll ask me, how do we embed, okay? So how many of you all are aware of concept of embedding? Embed, right? One person. Embed. You know how to embed. Embed. Uh, no. Embedding uses the H hypertext uh, transfer pro HTTPS. Okay. So the difference between embedding and uh, hyperlink is different. So hyperlink, when you click on the link, it will take you to the source. When you use uh, embedding, it inserts into the HTML code. Okay. So I will show you how to embed. So if you look very, very, if you look very closely here, right, you will see one button called embed embed here. Can you see this small button? It mm -hmm. usually misses everyone's eye yeah. because it's too small. It's actually, you click on this button okay. and you'll get something known as an embed code. Okay. okay. This embed code you can insert into anything. You can insert in your Instagram, in your Facebook, in anything. You can insert this embed code. Okay. That's the embed code. Yeah. I will show you how to transfer to smart to UMS. Okay, I will show you how to transfer this embed code. So you, you have done it already? You know, okay. So those of you all who are familiar with embedding will be knowing how to do this. Nora, can you help the this one? Cannot. Show you how to use embed codes. Okay. Please log on to your smart to UMS account. Okay, let's please log on. For I will give you all, all logged on. Yeah, please log on. I will give you all some time. We'll show you how to embed in smart to ms I'll give you all some time. We are log lo everyone logged on. Okay. 
Just log on to Smart2. It will take some time, maybe. Uh, log on to Smart2. Sorry, I have to go fast, but when you all are in a smaller class, I will teach you all individually, one by one. Okay, so this is actually the embed code. So embed code is different from YouTube link. YouTube link is only a short link, right? Embed code is different. It allows you to paste the image into your smart to ms So I'm going to log on to my smart to ms -er. So I just log on to smart to ms smart to ms so I, I will show you how to log on. Just log on first. Let me log on first. Because I have to... Okay, so I'll go into my some stuff. Okay, I'm going to use one of my older courses which is no longer being uh, used. Huh? So if you are uploading anything, right? For your current course, it will appear to the students, it will come, come on there. But if you want to upload just for the mock trial, you just use any of your older courses which are not active. So I'll just use one of my older courses. Okay, so I just use one of my older courses which is not active. It's offline. Okay. Okay, so this is my older course. Okay, I want to add, right? How do you add content to your Smart to EMS, which button do you use? Turn editing on. Turn editing on, okay, good. <laughs> okay, now we have to add the content. Okay, so you add the content, okay, so turn editing. So I will just select add an activity or resource. Okay, now what kind of activity we want to add? I want to add it as a lesson, lesson for the student. So what do I do? I add a So I will tell you I will tell you something about H5P and Smart to EMS. Our Smart to EMS is currently an older release. Okay, the new release allows you to add H5P directly into the Smart to EMS into the Moodle platform. But because this is an older release, we have to use a trick. There's a trick actually in that in which we cheat the system to display our content. We actually uh, tricking the system. So. I figure I read in the forums actually because I read to the forums and they showed us how to do the script to add it inside. I will show you how it's done. Okay, so what you do here is you have to add a file. You click on file and you add. Just go to file and add. And this is how you can embed almost anything into Smart to MS, even though you don't have the other buttons. Okay, you'll see this description. See, add a file, right? So this one is actually Airbus. I'm just adding my stuff. Airbus AF, okay. Airbus, Airbus, Airbus A400M, 100M, right? I'm adding this. Okay, then you go to this. Can you see this window here, text window? You go around and you click here. Look at this here. There's a small keyboard like here. You click on the keyboard. The keyboard is here. Can you see the keyboard here? Everyone click? Okay. You look at this button, you'll see a two greater than equal to sign. Okay, that is the HTML editor. Okay, some of you all who are doing software in this room may be aware of HTML editor. Okay, that's the HTML editor. You click on the HTML editor, and you'll get this page. Got it? Everyone got it? So now you just control and V. Okay, so one minute. I just embed this code. I copy the embed code. One second. I copy embed code from here. This code I copy. And I paste it here. So that is your HTML code. You can make the image bigger or smaller by changing some component inside the code. But I won't tell you how it's done because it's complicated, as you'll get confused. So you can adjust the pixel to make it bigger or smaller. But we won't do that now. We'll do it during the actual training, full training. We do that. Yeah. Then you save. You update or save. Okay. Okay, now this thing, everything goes here. You can see it's inside here already. It's already gone. Should you, you should be able to see this. If it's embedded successfully, you should be able to see. If you cannot, you ask me to come around because everyone can see this. Okay, if you cannot, it means a small, some dot or something is missing in your embed code. 
So one comma will have proper. So it has this. Okay. Now you use click here. This is very important. Display description on course page. Okay. You click here. Display description on course page. Everyone is okay? Okay. Now because we are using, we are actually trying to trick the system, right? This system is designed to accept a file. It will not allow you to proceed unless you upload something. You need to upload something into the system. So what I do, I generally upload just a dummy image. So I click here. I click and I will just add a, choose a file. So I will just add a picture of some, my image, okay? I just add my image file because if you don't do this, the system will not accept your, your thing. You have to force the system. But when uh, JTMK updates your uh, smart 2 ms you will be able to embed directly without do doing this. This is a cheat sheet for the system. If JTMK updates smart 2 smart 2 I have no idea. Yeah, that is my, not my area. <laughs> it's there. Yeah. So we just focus on the basically, basically what happens, it's very hard to embed without using this trick. So I read to the forum, Moodle forum, and then you can find this, how to embed it. Others you cannot. But if you have a uh, Facebook, you can embed in Facebook. If you have yeah, direct embed in Facebook or any other. Because embed code works universally. OK, so open, done. I just put an image and upload this file. OK, so done. So wait for a while. And then save and return to the course or save and display. Save. This is you're all familiar with. OK, so here. The image is here. Wait one second. Loading, loading. Yeah, okay, yeah. Click here, look at your course. Second, ah, one second. One second, one second, one second. Okay. So if you see your course, right, you can see your image there. You look at your course, the student description page. You can see this image with the heat map. So that's how you embed it into H5P. My image doesn't appear. I only appear this uh, Because you have not clicked on, just follow the instructions. Yeah. What happened? Embedding. I've got smart now, but I don't know how to put it onto smart. I'm inside my smart. I have yeah. a location. Do I use something here? Uh, you use, you're already in the smart Excellent. system. Uh, you click the greater and the HTML code buttons, the greater and equal to sign. Um, HTML code, yeah. HTML code. Yeah, this? Yes, yeah, that's HTML code button. Okay, thank you. So, so if you need special tutorial, I'll come and teach you separately. No, don't worry. It's okay. okay. Uh, you choose any file of a gambar. Just gambar, Raja. Yeah, just put any image. Usually of the aircraft. Source. Yeah. Okay. See, so we, need, we need something we can look at and do it step by step. Oh, okay. We are recording it all, so we'll give you the recording. Okay, so, we'll just okay, so I click there. Yeah, and then you add your source code from your your image. For H, H5. Uh, is that your source code? No. Bukhan is the source code. Uh, just copy the source code from... Uh, do I put it below there? Yep, below. Okay, okay, let me do it. I return, it's going to go so we'll just see all of them. If they are okay, because most of them are just check around. Just check around. What source code? The chor itu besar itu kecil besar that that greater than equal to sign. No 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 no. Click that first, and then click the embed code. Uh, console console last greater than equal to. Okay. Update. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Display on the first page. Display. Click the small icon. Yeah. Okay. Now you save and return to the course. Is it there already? It's yeah. there. It's there already. It's there. It's there. Okay. It's there. So you just save and return to the course. Save and return to the course. I will be doing a full day course. So I will show. I think with smaller group. This yeah, is, it's this just those little yeah. icons. Yeah, there's the icon. icon. If it's up there, step by step, then we can follow yep, it. Yep. If you have one slide saying push this button. OK, OK, you want that way? I have those good, as well. Right? I have that. Yeah. <laughs> it's too many buttons to because click. Them, that would help me step by step up OK. So, OK? okay. Can click? OK. OK, everybody OK? 
okay, based on our com uh, based on our usage, we are having different competencies. Can do, doctor. Can do. I'm not getting it. Okay. So let's edit. Edit setting. Edit setting. Okay. Yeah. Add an, you added an activity or resource. Add. Now this is the thing, right? Yeah, so, so you click here. This one. This one. Yeah, so Sini, Sini. The ah, embed the code. Embed it already. Yes. So uh -huh. the other. Okay. Okay. Update. Update. And then you click here. Display on. Ah, this is very oh, important. Then you take, add. Uh, uh -huh. You didn't. You you, yes, ah, you added any image, page. right? Yes. This is actually go down and so then. I didn't click this thing. Yeah. Save and return to the course. I didn't click that one. That's why this why this requires training with a smaller group. So everyone, not come as yet. No, no. Have to check. Then you have to check the source code. Source code. Source code. Source code. Check the source code. Get your resource. So edit. Edit setting. Usually one small line is ah so. So we just. Have I double copied it? Yes. I think it's twice. Is it on your is it on your clipboard? But okay, I think no, that, no, no. that is the thing. Let's just go back here. It's still there. Still here. There you go. Copy. So copy. Maybe I double copied it. Uh, Too it much should. Code. It, it should no, not. It, it should be one. Okay. Yeah, so update. Okay. Let's try. Mm, display on the first page. Everything is set. Okay. Should be there. Okay. Inside. Now it's there. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's the. Actually, because we are. This is not regular stuff. We actually cheating, <laughs> are yes, cheating yes, the system. Sorry. So, actually, it should come here. You know, should there should be one uh, display your. So wait, wait this is the no. picture. Yeah, that's why you go back to your course and then the student will see it in the main page. Wait. Everyone is accessing simultaneously. Ah, so they will see. Okay, that's so, the hotspot. Yeah, spot. that's the hotspot. So now your, your student can click here and then they can that's see. Of course it's a little, little bit small, but it's okay. So All right, can okay. see. Okay. 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 Got it, got it. Okay. Everyone having anybody difficulty? No one, right? Okay. You can embed in your Instagram. So now you can see your student will see this image and then they will click and they will see everything. So they can see the parts. So they will see images and other objects. Okay, so this is one of the ways in which you can make your presentation more interactive. Okay, okay now we go. Uh, is everyone okay with that? With this one? Okay, so we go into more intensive next time when I do a individual instruction for you all. We, we will move on to another tool which is used by most lecturers. So, sorry, Prof. Just uh, to add one point, uh, what Dr. Kenneth, what Dr. Kenneth uh, has just uh, demonstrated and showed us, particularly this skill of putting an uh, interactive content, we call interactive content. Okay? And this is the one that will support SCL, uh, Student Centered Learning. Students don't like actually to come in and passively look at something. They would like to be engaged. They like to meaningfully interact to get information. So through this way, your complicated complex diagram in engineering, now you can have a very important notes or videos uh, in that diagram. You know, this one picture, but actually a different kind of uh, link, hotspot to text and to videos and to images and to animation and else thing. So, it becomes a very personalized uh, platform for the students to interact. Is these things? Let's say ten years ago, you need a programmer to do this, but now you see it is so uh, user friendly. Thank you, Dr. Kenneth. This is wonderful. You must master this. Just make at least one of these interactive one, and I think uh, they should be able to pass this. Yeah, yeah, you can do. Yeah, <laughs> so this is true. Oh, yeah, it's. Uh, that's why we have to be thankful for the open source developer who create for us all this content. <laughs> it's all free. We, it's actually open source and it's free. So and tomorrow also, may be commercialized. Also, uh, <laughs> smart UFS, is the one taking care of the smart UFS platform. Uh, so you can see it's already. This end of this semester, they'll be upgrading our Moodle. Then automatically, uh, it's fighting all to be put to very easily. At the moment, uh, through the procedure that the camera show us, we can proceed. Okay, so so this is one of the first tools. So there are a total of 15 tools, or more, more than 15 tools, which I cannot cover in this uh, session. So I will go through one uh, another tool, which is the arranging in the order. Okay, there's a chronological tool. So I will give you a demo of a chronological tool and how it works. So this tool is for presentation to the student. Okay, now you want to assess the student's uh, knowledge, right? So they have other tools for assessment. I will give you an example of a very simple chronological tool 
Okay, so it's here. So I'll just show you. I'll go back to my H5P, close, go to my account. Everything is saved there. And okay. Okay. Wait for a while. It takes time to load. Okay. Now, suppose you're a lecturer who's teaching aviation and you just are uh, uh, teaching history of aviation. You want them to arrange the aeroplane in the order in which they were developed. Okay, so you have taught the lecture, for instance, you taught the lecture on aviation industry and so on and so forth. Now you want them to arrange the order. So I will just do this. So what I do is I'm going to arrange the order randomly. Okay, I just arrange randomly. I move this somewhere here and so on. And then I check. Okay, so I got zero point. Okay, so now if it's in the correct order, you retry. You retry. Okay, so I put 707, then I put 727, 727, 737, and I put this one. So I check again. Okay, now everything is in order, so you get 5 out of 5 point. Now this activity you can embed into your HT, in your uh, smart to ms as well. Okay, similar way it works. So you just go to your view button, uh, edit content. Okay, and you can see I save it again. Then I go to, can you see the embed code? It's here. Actually, uh, you'll always miss it because it's so small and it's a gray color. So when I was learning this, I took about one, one day to find where is that embed code. So it's the embed code is below each image. Okay, so then you have embed code. Similar way, you insert it. That becomes a test for the student. Now, how you create this is by using another tool. Okay, I will show you how to use the second tool. Okay, so you go back to your account my account and you always have to come back to this create new content button create new content okay so the tool which you use is something known as image sequencing image sequencing will adjust the images in their chronological order so uh, for example if you are doing a process uh, cook for example cookery you can create images using that chronological order or if you are doing a sop standard operating procedure you can use this as well but if you're, you're chronology history student of history or student of geography how the river evolves you can use this tool okay so the tool is called image sequencing okay image sequencing here it's here okay so image sequencing it's a very very easy tool to use and all it, it already has the default drag to arrange the images in the correct sequence for example i can say in the correct chronological order for example chronological order okay so, I, so my task is drag to arrange the images in the correct chronological order now this one you can do even up to 100 images okay it will accept uh, any amount it's in like but your student will have complexity arranging and organizing so don't go more than 20 images plus otherwise your uh, as prof Hong mentioned your cognitive load will increase so this is one so what you do is like this you just add the image here so this is the ordering of the image so for example if the first for, I'm, for example i'm giving the example of the aeroplane the first image was 1960 it's here 1971 will be here 1982 will be here and then you can add more image 1983 and so on and so forth now all you need to do is add the image that's all so i click here image the first image i add for example i just add something one for example i add this okay Okay, I add the older one. Okay, open. Open. Okay. Then I wait for it to load and I just edit copyright. You can edit copyright here, as I told you all. I won't do it now because sorry. Yes. You, you need me to explain again? Okay. And everyone on track? Yes. Okay, so okay. If you need me, you just call. I will otherwise it's not complete. Okay, so you have your image here and then you can just add an old propeller, an old propeller engine, for example. Okay, so I just have an image, then I save image, so done, image. Now, if you look down right, there's another tool called audio, audio tool. Now, suppose you're reading out an SOP, you can read out a, uh, the SOP to your student, like step one, step two, step three, step four. Okay, you can read out the SOP, for example, transfer one ml of uh, solution A to the test tube. You can make audio clips of that and you can ask them to arrange the audio clips as well. So especially for medical, I think you'll use procedure, right? 
So if you have your procedural audio, you can edit to the uh, step by step, and then you can listen to the overall audio. Okay, so these are very good for procedures, procedures or other uh, forms of uh, chronology. Okay, so let's add the next one. So I just add image of some other things. So I use another image. Okay, open. Okay. So this is a modern proper like. A And then so I just download let's try and get an image. So fix stop A. We have an image of uh, so I click this old picture, so this I add this, and I just download. I'm just downloading for. You can just add any images. You need to add. Okay. Okay. So, okay download. Okay, so. And add. So, and then I add another image. So I needed images. Okay, so I just have three images, just for example, mm. and then I say this is uh, uh, intermediate. Okay. Now this image, right? I want to order it in the reverse order, so I want to move this image up. I just click here. Can you see there's an arrow button for reordering? You just move this image here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I save, mm -hmm. and I'm done. Okay, so this is the uh, evolution. So after you save, you see these images. So when the student sees the image, right, it will be arranged randomly, never in the correct order. So let's see what happens if I do, if I don't do anything, I just move it around. I just move this here and I move this here and move this here, okay? I arrange and I check. So it says no, okay? It also allows you to uh, look for the solution. So the solution will be there. So it looks for the solution. But usually if you're doing assessment, don't give them the solution. Okay, so usually we arrange like around 25. Sometimes you can also uh, block retry. So if you want them to do only once, you can block the retry attempt in the browser. How you do this is you go back to your editor, uh, editor mode, and you can change the behavior. You have behavioral settings. Okay, so you can add solution button. You can delete this. Uh, so you can retry when the game is over, or you can remove it, and then you can add button for resuming. Okay, so you take off all this. You save, and now you can see what happens. So I have taken away the control. So if I do this one, okay, and then I check, it will show you one point, but doesn't allow me to reorder. So the, you know the student which have. So this is good in your classroom. So after about 30 minutes of teaching, you stop, you show this, and then you see the response. So you don't have to grade them for this, just to get a, a, a sense of their cognition. Yeah. No, 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 you embed it. So here, I will show you how it's done. So yeah, you do it in the same way. Now you want to embed this, right? You go to edit, uh, you save, and you can see the embed code here. Can you see the embed code? Yes. Okay, so I, again, I do the same thing. I copy, I go back to smart to ums Here, I've embedded one already. I add an activity or resource. Again, I go back to my File, add, and then you do the same thing. So you click here, button, then you, you click here, click here, you embed, paste, embed, update, and then you display description on the first page, and this is your test. So this is your test, for example. I just, I have to add something here, right? As I told you all, it's not regular. So choose file, add, upload, open. Load and then you are done. So, and suddenly offline. This is the smart two. Load this file. Cannot active. 
not accepting because smart to ms has some fault i think just now just by just add something else oops smart to ms some <laughs> error error coming up right right file picker yeah usually this is what's happening right just by seems to add this 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 is right open this one. Oops, there's a sorry, there's an error with the Sys Smart 2 it's showing up as error. Okay, so I cannot save and display this probably because oh, yeah, okay. it's gone offline. Okay. So I have to do this all over again because the system logged me out. <laughs> so I paste, update your evaluation, your assessment. assessment. And I click. File. This. This. Open. Upload this file. Okay, now it works. It logged us out in the middle of session. <laughs> Embarrassing. Okay, so now you can see it's embedded already inside. It comes inside the timeline. Okay, so this way, in using this, you can upload your assessment inside. Now, it, when I thought you're hotspot, there's another one which is called hotspot to identify. For example, if I show a basket of fruit with different fruit, I can actually t ask the students how to identify different fruit in the basket. Okay, I won't teach that to you all in this session because it's a little bit more difficult because you need to uh, adjust the points very accurately. Because that one, uh, you see what happens when you do the heat map, right? For the fruit, for example, if some fruit is round and some are square, you, it will not work properly. So that requires additional setting. But what I'm going to show you next is how to convert video into interactive video. Have you all done video into interactive video? So, uh, okay, to begin with the exercise, right? Each one of you go to the YouTube channel and select one video which best describes your subject. Any one video. The video should be descriptive. It can be a lecture. It most like the best choice is lecture. Okay. If you have your own lecture, some of us have. You can use that. Okay. Any of you all have lecture on YouTube? Ready? Your own lecture on YouTube? No. So usually we have the lecture. We can use our own lecture. Dina has right. Okay. So you can use your own lecture for interaction. Okay, I will show you how it's done. So what the system will do? Sure. We can use some of our videos as well. Okay, so what the system will do when you use interactive video is it will display the video until a certain point and then it will stop the video and ask a question. It will ask a text-based question. So only when you answer the question, it will proceed. Otherwise, it will be stuck. It will, the student cannot post the video forward. So that way, when the student complete the video, you know they have completed the lesson. Okay? Otherwise, the student will, you know what they do? They click and they leave it open, and you think it's down. <laughs> Actually, they have not used. So this is the way you use the video, interactive video session. Okay, so you will just find the video first. Then I will show you how to look at video. Okay. Okay, found the video. One has a link. It's all you require is the link, not the embed, just the link. Video link.
Okay, I'm going to extract a video from here. Make sure that when you use a video, it's either your own video, it has some content inside, uh, descriptive content, because you will evaluate the student based on the description of the video. So the best videos are the ones which are your own lectures, which have uh, descriptive content. So once you have your video, you copy our link. Okay, so you have your link copied. You go to H5P. Okay, go to H5P. And then you click on which button? Create new content. Everything comes down to this one button, create new content. Okay, so the content type is called interactive video. Okay, there's video with hotspot also, but don't use that. Use interactive video. Video. Okay, so you have interactive video. Wait for it to load, and then you have to add your video. So when you reach your video editor, okay, yeah, slowly, slowly. You got the video editor. Can can reach. Got your videos? <laughs> Don't have any. Just use any one, any video from the any any video, any video. No, no. Yeah. Just use just the URL. Just the URL. Just for example. Uh, just co don't use embed code. Just copy, share, share, share code. Just use any video. Anything of your subject. Anything can. Can use any of this. So remember, when you use H5P videos uh, from YouTube, you don't have to worry about copyright because this YouTube allows you to use embed it. But only if you don't download from YouTube and uploading, and that's only no no. So you don't upload, download and upload. But if it's on YouTube and you insert the link, it's perfectly okay. Because some of the commercial video they won't allow you to insert the link as well. So if that means your it's so it's those you don't use, yeah, commercial video. You got your videos? Okay, so we go down to the next step, which is embedding or inserting the video inside. Okay, so you have here, you click here, and then you add the video here, paste the link, just the link, okay, insert. Insert, wait for, give it some time to, to basically render the video, they render the video. So if you want to edit copyright, you want to give attribution, you can give it here. You just add all the author name, the video title, and the source. For example, here I'm going to add this video source. Simple. So you get attribution. So license is this one is this one. I know the license, so this is attribution. Okay. So those of you all who attended a previous course on copyright so curation, yeah. huh? so we we just put that. Yeah, if it's your own personal video, yeah. there's no need to attribute it to yourself because H5P will attribute it to you. But if it's somebody else's video, you need to attribute it to that individual. Okay. So we, we have done in the previous workshop. Yeah, video, your, your own, right? Yes. Then just use it, no problem. There's no need, because when you, when you put up a link, it attributes it to you. H5P will automatically attribute to you. That's it. So this is your video, okay? So if everyone has done this step, I'll proceed to the next one. Everyone is here. They check, okay? So I will, I will now proceed to the next step, which is the addition of interaction. Okay? And this is where the video actually becomes interactive. For example, this is a, this is one of the lecture which I developed, which got voice and text, uh, voice and slide. Okay, I want to test my students at every point or I don't want to go for class at all. So I, I don't want the student to go into the next concept without covering the first concept. Okay, 
I can pause. So what we do is we add interaction. So all the interactions are basically up here. Can you see this? You have fill in the blanks, you have multiple choice, you have single choice and all. I will show you how to add them. Okay, to begin with, you have to start playing the video. Okay, so the video will start playing. It contains co content. Okay, so I know where my content is, all this stuff. I know the content, right? So, okay. So here I stop the video, I pause. Click here, pause. Pause. Yes, I switch off my volume here. Switch off this volume. You just add the pause button here, you click stop, and now you can add your interaction. One second. Okay. I want to make a multiple choice question here, okay? So I click here. Okay, so the video is paused at this time and then I add a, for example, I can add a poster. So, which, where is, okay, this is a question which has been discussed in the previous three minutes of the video. So I know what's in the video. So when you make your video, right, you need to study the whole video. It's okay to reuse other people's videos, perfectly okay, but you should study the video to find out which points of discussion you can use for assessment. If, if you can't find those, that's why when we, when we create our own content, right, in the back of your mind, you create content in which you develop assessment points at every five or seven minutes. So every five minutes you have an assessment point. So you discuss one concept, assessment. Next concept, assessment. So I want to ask this question, okay? So uh, this is the, where does this per interaction occur? I just make a short occur. So, okay. So it says you, the first one is the, the nucleus. The second one will be the, for example, mitochondrion, mito and this is the endoplasmic so I just add, add option so endoplasmic okay I have added three choice three choices for the student to click and I have to tell the machine which is the correct one so for example if this is the correct one I click here okay so if you want to make it more expand uh, expand more you can add five or ten or fifteen up to you it depends on your level of uh, I mean the uh, domain which you want to basically assess so you can add more okay so you have your stuff so you have everything and then you after you finish everything you save okay, okay now what what this one has done can you see this the video has inserted something inside so you can see this in the thing so this thing will appear when the video is actually playing after you save it Okay, that's done, right? Now you allow the video to play. So basically, you close. So this is how it left here. You can add your position. Okay. Okay. I won't give you another example because it's going to become, uh, it's going to drag your time. But did you understand the concept of how to insert the interaction in the video? So okay. So when you're done with this, basically you save. You save. You save every time, or else you will lose your uh, text. So can you see this lock key here, the lock? So the video will not proceed unless the student gives the correct answer. So they can go back, they have to go back in correct. So the way you can do this is something known as behavioral setting. So in the behavioral setting, right, you can allow, for example, the student reached a certain point, they can actually retry. You can change that, so you can retry. So you can have a retry button, you can enable the retry button. So you can enable the override or you can disable. So then you enable this, so you can override, override means allows you to, so I save, okay. So I have added this, now I want to go to the summary task, okay. So summary task is some kind of a summative assessment after your entire 30 minute video. For example, your class is one hour, 30 minutes, you do a short assessment every 15 minutes and then you can do a summative assessment at the end of your lesson, lesson. so you give a summative assessment is describe the process or describe some process. Describe 
okay so you have the statement and then you can add a statement so you can give it a value so this will be your answer for example CISPR gene regulation okay, so this one you get and then you can add more statements okay so enable 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 say So now it will save your video and then you will see. Now this is basically the video which you see. Can you see the small dot here? The small dot is actually the question and answer session. So if you see some of the videos I have created in my account, they will have, uh, for example, you all. For example, I have this on DNA extraction fundamental, you can see. So this one has got many points, so it will ask you a question at each point. Okay, so there are different question which assess and when you f finish your video, you will have a final assessment here. So when you all come for the next H5P training, please bring your lecture note. I will show you how to construct this kind of assessment. So I can share with you my uh, videos and you can see, you can basically uh, use them. You can remix and reuse and you can play with them so you can pick out. Now this video, right, if the student sees, they will play. Okay. Now, now I am view viewing it as a student. I cannot force this video. It will, it will play according to the pace of my class. So this is a good way to monitor a student. Suppose you have smart tool learning, right? And then you put everything online. Then you don't know whether they watched your video or didn't watch. But if they didn't watch the video, you will see the data when you see your smart tool MS system. So if they didn't watch the video, they won't know the question. They won't be get a correct answer. So to see, show this before the actual presentation or no. Uh, suppose you are no, you are doing a class online, fully online. Okay, you use this tool. If you are doing face to face, it's okay because you are doing your assessment points at each uh, segment of your lecture. You it's okay. But if you are doing online class, you want to you are doing a, for example a, a prerequisite class, and you want to know whether they have undertaken the prerequisite, you can use this method. So only when they finish the entire video, the assessment will be uh, graded as complete. Yes, you have to embed. So. Yep, yep. So what you do is you click here embed, embed. And you again you copy the code. You go back to your smart to MS, which I have to log into again. So I have my smart. It will log out every few minutes, so I have to keep logging in. So, so I go back. Then you click here and then because the system has been set to log off after 10 minutes, I think, if you don't use it. So it will keep logging off and I'm talking to you. <laughs> okay, so I click here, you get to my course. Do you so? We have a problem, huh? so you have to add activity or resource. Turn editing on. It's very stuffy in here, right? There's econ failure, I think. Yeah, it's too it's stuffy, right? You all are feeling hot. It's a uh, econ. Sorry for about that. So you add your file. Add. And you have your, again, the same procedure, HTML code, paste your code, uh, update, display, and then DNA. Okay, so you can use, and then you here you need to add something. So you just add a file from somewhere. So you add a file, upload a file. You can add, you can actually add your lecture notes here. Add something. Just add some image or some. Just add some document which is downloaded. Just add a random document inside. Then upload this file. Okay, not problem again. You must server.
something wrong again with the server. Log out again, right? Auto log out, right? This is the problem every time you log out. So I just save and display, I just because I will force it to ask me to log in again. Okay, as usual. You all face the problem all the time? Again, I have to do it all over again. Set here. Hyperlink. Add paste. Edit. Okay, so DNA. So, so I add something here. Take it up now. Okay, so you just edit the content and then so on and so forth. So you save and display, and you have your course running. Yes. Okay. So when you display your course, your video will spend. So you have your video displayed here. It goes into your system. So when you when you see this video, right? You can see the can you see the buttons actually appear with the video. The buttons. Can you see the buttons here? These buttons are actually the the control buttons for your video. You can, they can watch it as picture in picture. Or they can watch it as as a normal video. Now the way you track your student, right? As you ask, if you, if okay, like suppose uh, uh, the JTMK install the latest release of Moodle, which is the new version, you will see that the HTML, you can track the grade here. But in this system, you cannot track the grade. So what you can do is you add the button for the activity, uh, The you know there's a bar, the progress button, you can add it from your site administration. So when they click on this link, they, you will see it becoming from red to green. This course is actually a mock-up course, so you can't see that button. But on site administration, you can see your buttons. From the recycle course, it's okay. It's very slow. You all add button, right? To the tracking button, progress tracking bar. So you all use progress bar. Yeah. No, no, it's for everyone. It's okay. It's the progress button. So long. It takes a long time to. Okay. It's very slow. So here you have your progress bar. Everything is slow. Huh? Sorry, it takes time. There's, there's a button called a progress bar. So the progress bar will appear here. So you just add it to your course. Okay, you can select your progress bar and then you save change and you add this progress bar to your course. So if they have not attempted it, you will see it as a red. If they have attempted it, you will see it as a green. So once you are in your course, this button called manage blocks and you can add you can also add a visitor counter so you can track how many visitors are there on your smart to ms at any given time so you can add progress 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 bar so you, so i have installed it already you can install it here so when you see a can you see the progress bar here it says progress bar it's uninstalled right you have you when you if you don't have a progress bar in your smart tool, you'll see it as install. You click on install, it will go inside the system. Okay. It is progress for each student. Each student's progress can be tracked. So usually I can see. So when you see all the progress bars together, if one is green, it means all the students have completed. But if you look at everything and then you see the one is red dot, right? You can click on that one and you can click on the red dot and you will know which is the exact 
assignment which they did not assess. Now, when you have a, when it's uh, the new release of Moodle, you will see a heat map. So when you open your page, the main page for your course, you will see the ones which are more interactive as red and the ones which are less touched as blue, depending on the color, so you can color setting. But that's in the latest, the next version of the release, next release of Moodle. Okay, so this is how we do the, assess, the videos embedding. Okay, so this one is actually doing. So now it asked me this question, it's running. So wherever, DNMO stack was space, check. Okay, so it allows you to continue. So in this, then it, the video will progress again until the next button and then it will ask me the next question. Okay, so it's clear about this video setting. So in the next training, right, please bring your own video and I will show you how to embed the content inside all this content. You bring your video assessment, I will guide you through the step-by-step -step procedure. So that's about thing. So you all want a break or you want to go on to the next? Need a break? Uh, you'll get cognitive overload. Yeah. Actually, H5P is so interesting, right? You can. I will show you the. I will show you a video. I sit. I could not let go of it for about 12 hours. I watch it for 12 hours because each step, each one is very interesting. I can give you the tutorial for H5P. It's available at H5P. I think. Uh, yeah. After after can Give us the site where the tutorials are there. Yeah, so it's very good. You can go back and do your own edition. Okay, so yeah. break for. Uh, otherwise, uh, this is the one that will help you enrich uh, interactive learning in Smart UMS. Because you're going to embed your HASEO, your outcome, in your Smart UMS. Okay? And this will bring us actually to the next level of uh, learning in UMS. And among all the public university, UMS will be the first entity to implement h 5 Give a clap for ourselves. Thank you, Dr. Kenneth. I didn't do anything, I'm just here. Okay, so. Okay, so we will take a break for five, oh, five minutes, right? Ten minutes, ten minutes. So it's back uh, at 12.15 because I... Thank you. So, so we'll go to... Okay, what I need to sh uh, I need to ask one question from you all. How many of you all know about Adobe Spark? Spark. Spark. You know about Adobe Spark? Spark. One Salmi is there or no? Okay. Adobe Spark. Actually, if you go through the, if you are in the UMS inside our LAN network, right? You UMS gives you a free Adobe suite for you all to interact with. So Adobe Spark is one of the free things which you use for developing content. Okay, I can do your training. I think they need training from Adobe Spark. So after 10 minutes, you come back. We'll go on to the next interaction. 10 minutes, okay? Thank you. See you all later. I don't go away. Hello. So I'll show you all. Uh. So you can see the video and then you can go back and then Yep, yep, yep. Like for example, recently I do a five yep. minutes yep. book using this Linomatics. Yep. Five minutes video it takes me about three hours just to complete that one. But um, like in our PLNT, we are for each lecture to spend about five minutes B and B for a week. Yeah, yeah. So does this all of us is called the P and and you have to ask from yeah, okay. Because we definitely will show this to the student mm -hmm. and then we come to five minutes of lecture. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But we are doing it for about yes. three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hours. The man, the man power, man hours is yeah, a lot. Yeah. Actually, that's it. Yeah. 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 Mm. So this is, this is a very uh, this a important, you have to ask the uh, because management. For us to go into this, uh, on one hand, it is very useful for the student because uh, it is uh, lessons on demand. Okay. Okay. And the, uh, we, we know that this will benefit our student and this is uh, 
will match actually what they want. On demand learning, student-centered learning. But on our part, it's very demanding. We need yeah. to spend a lot of time to prepare all these. So are these being recognized and appreciated by the university or not? So uh, let me tell you something is happening. In the ELMPT, uh, they are making arrangement that blended learning is also one of the items under teaching and learning. Okay? So if you do this, example, Dr. Kenneth, hmm. I think we will get full mark. Yep, yep. You know? We know, we recognize the amount of time spent in it. So if you produce such things, uh, it will be ticked automatically by the ELMPT, uh, whatever mechanism, uh, as book recognized by the university. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But they're still working on it. The which, which time. Automatically we... Every... Yeah, well, uh, annual appraisal. Uh, uh, yeah, now only in the smart room. That's it, just now. They are... They will... Yes, 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 yes. That's what we do. Yeah. Okay. Our smart room will be able to recognize that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So 10, 10 minutes, right? So 12, 12, 20. Can we come back at 12.20? So, those of you all who have, I don't want to... I will come in for a rounding up already. Yeah, okay. Come in for a summary already. Yeah. If anybody wants to have more information, right, I will be here. I will show you. After, after 1 o'clock, I will still be here. You can ask me. You will go. Yes. Sorry? About the administration, you want to add it? Yeah. This one hidden, hidden somewhere behind. I, I know, I know. It's where it's yeah. it's you have to go to your you turn editing on first. Yeah, yeah, already, already turn editing. It's it's somewhere hidden, somewhere deep inside. Administration. Okay. So go to administration one minute. Go to one minute. Go to one minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. Go to yeah, sure, 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 sure. It's okay. Thank you. Everyone has lectures. Yeah. No. Sorry. Oh, I mean, it's okay. I guess it's yeah. somewhere, right? You're, you're in the... I'm already in the dear activated yeah. one of our dear ah. But you're enrolled as student or as a panchara? I'm panchara. Progress, huh? Yeah. We just have to scroll here. It's very rarely used, so yeah. networks are my... Yeah. This feedback <laughs> really not deleted. Oh, nice. Yeah. Community yeah. finders. And my fun mate. Sometimes it appears. Because they have got. So, where's the add a block? Can you go down? Add block, add block. It's not showing add a block. Huh? So, how do you. Ah. Visible one. Huh? So, okay. Post completion status. Description. Okay. okay so, let's go to that. This is your active course? Uh, no, this is already active. Oh, deactivated, right? Last year, sorry. So there won't be students in the course, but you should ah, be able to see the bar there. I see, I see. Can you see? Is it come back? Because course. this is already grey. This is was from last semester. I mean, this mm, one. That's what I cannot. I think it, it shows, usually it should show up here as a progress bar. Uh, at the, at the administration? Mm. Yeah, it should show up. It's not showing up. Because our faculty is a bit unique, uh, there are a lot of lecturers in one course. Yeah, it should be the course completion status. So when the course is running, you will see, ah, here, yeah, progress. Ah. See, it didn't come the first time, see, ah. and then it come again. That's this strange. is the problem. Yeah, that's well, why I'm looking for a progress. Wait, 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 don't, 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 okay. it's still uh, loading. It yeah, yeah. <laughs> the problem with the system sometimes. See, when I'm trying to upload, it suddenly goes offline. Okay. Then, then on, Okay, progress bar, right? Uh, so all activities. So once the progress bar is added,